binoculars and what do I see? Jersey Devil, Chupacabra, half a dozen Yeti. But no matter, baby, what I do, I can't seem to find you. Hello, welcome to Featured Creatures. I'm Alan. I'm Alex. And I'm Garrett. Man, today's going to be a short episode. How short was it? I mean, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, oh, oh, no, it's over. Yeah. No, we did it. We did the whole thing. You just remember all it takes to be... <laughs> yeah, maybe that's, we'll... that's the whole episode. You may be wondering what the hell that is. That's the whole episode. Alan, what the hell is that? Uh, that's my janky, purposely janky rendition of the Enfield Horror. Because artistic liberties run rampant when nothing's real. Now, hold on. I remember... And maybe this is a false memory. I mean, yes. Uh, uh, one of you guys saying something about a horse? No. No. Okay, all right. I guess false memory. <laughs> I was ready to go with it, but that completely took me off guard. All right. I guess artistic liberty. Yeah, he saw a horse. It was bug-eyed and freaky looking and kept crawling in his bedroom window. And knows you know, about actually, it. I am, I'm thinking of a different uh, Lovecraftian horror. That Whole is spider like, legs? No, not that, but it is, I mean, it is like, like a ball of horse legs that like gives birth to goats all over the place. What? No. What? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, that's fun. Uh, today's going to so be, sh- is, I'm sorry. What so now? it's just horse legs. Well, I like, I think there's more to it. Like, I think it's so, like a goo ball. It's like Legion, but instead of babies and people bodies, it's fetuses or it's horse legs. <laughs> yes, I believe so. Huh. And it like gives birth to goats. But if you break one of its legs, you got to put it down. I don't think so because it's like an elder chore. And if I remember correctly, it eats its like, like most favorite followers and then like births them as goats. And they're like super powered goats. Well, I don't I like that. One. So I'm going to Google horse leg uh, goat birth. It <laughs> sounds like a mistake. <laughs> Safe search on horse incognito. Leg. Open link in incognito Goat. tab. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, I don't even know. It sounds like a like a what do they call that? Like a like a grindcore band. Yeah, Goat Birth. Actually, it just sounds kind of like a black metal. Mm. They meant it was gonna be a more convoluted title with the horse legs. You stump the Google is nothing. No, it started giving me a bunch of just uh goat birthing videos oh okay. i told i told you dude safe search no always off but here's an article goats and horses a natural pair at the racetrack <laughs> oh i just i like it's like a, like a cute like goat slash horse couple there's like at the racetrack like oh honey what are we doing we're, we're ironically betting on horses at the racetrack and there's a uh a kid's discovery thing that it's called title is why fainting goats faint <laughs> okay it's a pbs kids video about narcolepsy and how it's triggered by fear <laughs> now ever since that hero pig video came out you know all these goats just being in pain and trouble little they know it was fake i thought it was real <laughs> hero pig you say you don't know the hero pig no carrot it's uh the fifth i mean I, I don't. I don't know specifically what you're talking there about. There is a very specific. I just assume video. that a goat saved a kid or a no. pig saved a kid. No, no, no. It's a very specific video that I saw years before this even was a thing. Uh, there's a there's a little baby pig that's drowning. There's oh, a little baby yes. goat that's drowning, and the yes. pig comes out, swims, and saves it. I have seen that they tried to. There was a show where they tried to recreate viral videos. To no, s- it's not even. No, oh, okay. like there was a show. That they try to recreate viral videos and they tried to redo this one. Well, it's beyond that. This was made up by yeah, Nathan for you. It was orchestrated on purpose. So you just like threw. That's some exactly goat what I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's it was this convoluted thing to make you go to a nature pet refuge place. Okay, so it was for a good cause. <laughs> yeah, I see. But he's the he's the master of. Stooping the world. I guess propagandizing pigs is okay if it's for a good cause. 
I guess. Let's get to today's featured creature. Well, I mean, let's feature this pig a bit longer because, I mean, like, why? Well, that'll be my plug. There I we want... go. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to this because <laughs> okay, I guess, Nathan I guess for you is fair. the only legitimate art form of the this decade. I mean, we just couldn't. Okay, well, legitimate art form. All right, because I was going to say we just confirmed that he was like illegitimate that he faked this, p- this pig rescue. No. You should watch that show. Yeah, I mean, the way that he does it is no. there's, there's nothing mm-hmm. like him. All right, maybe. Will it make me like jaded and disillusioned though? No. No. Okay. All right. I mean, then in maybe. a different way. It's like it's this a fun. Is the, it's a fun comedy show. But the reality is brutal that people have to go with him to save their businesses. It, it it's so fucked. <laughs> so let's get to today's featured creature. Unless we're done featuring this pig, I, I guess we're that's done fine. for now. We can move on. We can move on. I'm just trying to pad out this episode. Well, today's featured creature is. The Enfield Horror. Or the Enfield Snorer, as I like to call it. Because <laughs> I'm going to throw this you. fucking Enfield Horror at you. <laughs> but he didn't say it was the Enfield Haunting, aren't you glad? The Poltergeist? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say the Enfield okay, Poltergeist. So I did at least remember that. I ch- so one of my bits of research is I was going to just look up some YouTube videos of this thing. Holy shit, dude. I put You put Enfield Horror? Uh-huh. It's Enfield Poltergeist yeah. videos as far as the eye can see. I That's went pretty it. pretty deep. I found a video from two years ago by a channel called Paranormal Captivity because <laughs> the lady's name is Cat. Okay. Oh, okay. And that was hosted by an actual the, cat. The channel hasn't been updated in like five months. That's too bad. Uh, I haven't looked at the other videos. That's it. I haven't looked at the other videos. Um, and she covered just one, like one, the one big sighting of it. Okay. But let's get to its name and field horror. No other names. That's the, no, no other, uh, I was gonna say nom de plume, but I guess it's not an author. So <laughs> no other epithets. Nope. Okay. But, uh, there might be another related monster I that see. happened earlier, but it, People think it's just a devil ape, a different kind of monster. <laughs> okay. Because it takes place in Enfield, Illinois. You know what? Let's do this one. No book. Off the top of my dome. Off the cuff. Until I get to the part where I definitely know I forgot. So I'm going to have to look that one up. Okay. Uh, okay. So April 25th, 1973. At 9.30 <laughs> p.m. <laughs> Let me fact check this. <laughs> April 25th, 1973, 9.30. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm impressed. That's the only part I needed. You better check. than me. You remembered the date and time. Uh, you already got me beat. Uh, Henry McDaniel was coming back from, I don't, he was coming back with his home from, with his wife. They never specified where they're going. Since it's 9.30, I assume a date night. Mm-hmm. Um, when In they the got 70s. Through, 73, yeah. Okay. When they got through their door, their children, Henry and Lil, which means his kid isn't a junior, were talking about a thing they saw in the backyard. And he's like, oh, you you crazy kids. He heard then a few like a little bit later, they never specify the time. He heard a scratching on the door. Only scratching, nothing more. Just a, just a scratching. Just a rap, rap, rapping on this <laughs> chamber door. <laughs> scratch, scratch, scratching on the sliding glass door. <laughs> <laughs> so we opened the door. And he saw this weird fucking monster. There's a quote from him. I don't, I I will definitely not remember the quote word for word, but he said it had three legs was about four feet tall, uh, two short clawed hands and a grayish body. Whoa. Oh, two big pink eyes like flashlights. Freakish eyes. Yeah. Pink eyes like flashlights. Yeah. So he immediately went to get his handgun. He had a 22 and just shot it a few times. Yeah. He knew he hit it because he heard it screaming or hissing. And then he watched it jump away. <laughs> well, it's and he's three legs. So he said be. it cleared 50 feet in three yeah. jumps, which I did some math like and it's it about 17 feet a jump. Okay. Like it, like it jumped horizontally that much. Cause then you're like, Oh, like 50. I thought like straight up, like it was castle <laughs> double jumping. I was like, what? Got Sylph's feather and just like, I don't care. Um, <laughs> he called the cops. The cops told him that a similar thing happened earlier that day. A kid, fuck, um, I don't remember the kid's first name, but I remember his last name because his last name is Garrett. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, he was attacked. 
he what ran into the house, his house screaming and told his mom that something attacked him and his shoes and shirt were all torn to shreds. Whoa. Then I th- like a few nights later, I, th- I think it's a few nights later. Henry McDaniel heard some noises outside his house, like some cats. And, uh, Oh, I don't like all these and us, but I'm doing this off the top of my dome. <laughs> it's okay. It's real. The and does scaffold the, the dome. Okay, he saw the creature on the railroad bridge, the trestle, uh, just wandering around and hopping like, and he's like, if it's not fucking with me, I'm not going to fuck with it. It's part of God's creation. I'll leave it alone. Uh, When the cops were there the first time they went, they followed like where it went and jumping. They found tracks like actual physical tracks, but the tracks got smaller as they followed them. Like they just shrank. So are, like I'm, I may be jumping ahead. Are there theories on what this thing might be? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm because I'm I'm super curious about that. Okay. And now there's one that I don't really remember off the top of my head, and that one would be the uh, here. Here's a picture for Shefton. Oh, that thing's adorable. Yeah, that's a cute guy. And you Google Enfield legs. Horror and go to images. It's just a but because there's no all the the only descriptions given were color, number of legs, short arms, eyes. Like, so the artist renditions are crazy. In Google Images, one of them's a crite. <laughs> okay. Okay, right, here, here's the one I couldn't remember off the top of my head. The Rick Rainbow Encounter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> Explain. Um, laugh it up, laugh it up, get it out. Um, yes, my name is Rick. <laughs> it's not that funny. Richard rainbow hello i'm dick rainbow <laughs> precisely detective dick rainbow you may know my father john rainbow <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> that's right <laughs> first blood <laughs> part two wow <laughs> on uh sunday may 6th rick rainbow the then director of radio station wwki in kokomo indiana <laughs> this is rick rainbow uh, was searching uh, searching an area with three friends when he saw something that was around five and a half feet in height, gray, and stooped over, running through the woods. So did this say he was searching for something with friends? It just says searching an area. With friends. With three friends. They were looking for the next hit. Oh my god, they were looking for a place to bury the body. <laughs> saw a thing, five and a half feet tall in height, gray, and stooped over, running through the woods near an abandoned house which was reported was nearby McDaniel's home. Hold on. If this is happened, okay, maybe he's not in Kokomo. The radio station is in Kokomo. That okay. makes sense. It's where the tower uh, is. It it's was reported the that, regulation. Yeah, the, the the entity moved with an unnatural speed and quickly vanished from the four men's sight. However, Rick Rainbow <laughs> Claimed to have recorded the creature's eerie shriek as it ran from them on a tape recorder. Despite investigations by, despite investigation by world-renowned cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman, yep, who is said to have heard the creature's cries, the attention that the sightings received eventually died down, and the creature hasn't been seen since. Lauren told the press, "I traveled to Enfield, interviewed the witnesses, looked at the sighting of the house the Enfield monster had damaged." Heard some strange screeching banshee-like sounds and walked away bewildered. Inconclusive, then. Yep. That's it for the Enfield horror. The theories are weird Native American spirit. Okay. Because uh, the area was sacred to Native Americans. Okay. And the in- settlers thought it was cursed. A bunch of weird shit was happening. Is this Apparently where, the, where not- the mounds are? Uh, no, I think those are in Virginia. Never, never mind. But anyway. uh, uh, the settlers eventually started calling it the Devil's Kitchen. Because weird shit would always happen. But apparently not weird enough to just leave. That's that's what always blows my mind when it's like, oh, it was the darndest thing I ever saw. I don't know. I'm haunted every day, but I'm not going to go anyway. Yeah. Uh, interdimensionally um, creature because okay. of how it like vanished with this size changing footsteps. Kind of real. Or warping. aliens. Those are the main theories. Not deformed person. That was never like... No, a, they never quite went full melon head on that one. Uh, okay. I mean, well, it, like, I feel like that's not quite a fair comparison. Because, like, it's not like, oh, we misidentified this thing and it happened to be 
somebody that was like hydrocephalic. I mean, they misidentified it as a goddamn monster and but not they were a person like, with hydrocephalus. They were just like, yeah, like we like these people are born and exist, and it, like I mean, it's like I mean, no, because they were over. made in the lab by evil Doctor Melonhead. Come on, oh, I mean, <laughs> obviously, that's why I don't. Eat do I have to fucking candies. do we have to do an episode on Melonheads to fucking educate you? I mean, I want to, <laughs> but because. I'm, I'm in two minds about this. I think it would be in bad taste, which is the reason both that I want to do it and that I don't want to do it. Exercise your power to vote on <laughs> no, I'm not putting the, things. I'm not putting melon heads on the list. Oh, man. When are we? I mean, the real, the real potentially distasteful one we have to do is the South American hairy dwarves. I mean, that is the Venezuelan hairy dwarves. <laughs> that one is on the list. <laughs> I'm so excited to do that one. Huh. So, uh, the kind of related creature was back in 1941 and 42. Well, one of the theories is also errant kangaroo, also for the third leg, the being the long tail, right? I mean, kind of. Yeah, I could see that. The hoppity hops. It doesn't explain why why the tracks would get smaller. I mean, like that could just be like... It jumps further and it gets more on its tippy toes. Maybe. I don't know. It's like forced perspective on the on the tracks. It's because they're further away. They look smaller. <laughs> That's how reality works, right? Yeah, I just stood there and looked at it. And as I looked further, <laughs> it was the they got this thing. The further away tracks were smaller. Oh, good God! The semi-related creature, the Mount Vernon creature. The article says, ironically, sightings in the small village of Mount Vernon parentheses which is ironically less than 40 miles away from Manfield. how is that ironic it's not it's not right like it's it's not ironic it's just coincidental it's not ironic that something happens to be for it's coincidental no this is like uh they're trying to force that futurama joke you which, know which which everything's ironic but isn't ironic i'm not i'm not gonna sing the song where fry gets his hands from devil oh i mean I, okay yeah see that was me shoehorning a shoehorn of a joke <laughs> Good well, God. that's my friends is irony. Good God. Good God. Wait, uh, but that was ironic in the end of the episode, wasn't it? The use of words expressing something other than their literal intention. Now that is irony. Well, that's why he, he <laughs> sings that line I just sang. The Mount Vernon creature encounters involved a mysterious leaping beast that terrorized local people and is supposedly responsible for numerous numerous animal deaths and mutilations in the region. That's pretty ironic. But <laughs> well, when you consider that it's potentially an animal, sure. Uh, it was always described as looking like a baboon. Interesting. So, so probably a baboon. Pro- or yeah, the, a devil monkey, a type of cryptid. Hmm. I'm just scared of real baboons. That's fucked. I mean, <laughs> can we just wipe out all the man? I can't remember the book I was reading uh, like when I was a kid, but uh, I was ta- I think it was some book, a, per- a lion or something got bit by a baboon. And the, the way they described the burning searing pain, <laughs> like made me think that baboons like had fire mouths. Cause it's, it's I was like four acid into the wound. Anywho. Can a Enfield horror beat a hippo? No, no, definitely not. Yeah, if it can't even kill a kid. Yeah. Like it I just like tore up, up his, his fucking shirt. shoes and yeah. shirt. It's not really that impressive. Yeah. All right. But the way that you know is in America, not England, he said his eyes were like flashlights. And not and torches. Not torches. Not torches or he didn't lamps. get into his lorry or <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> They didn't, they didn't ring the bobbies. They didn't. None of the children had to go to hospital or call their solicitors. <laughs> uh, plug recommendations. Uh, I, okay, I'll go first, I guess, because I know what mine is. It feels like kind of a waste to plug it on in such a short episode, though. No, it's okay. I'm going to plug. I don't remember what it's in. It's another YouTube channel. I don't remember what the channel itself is called. But if you if you just search Goose Drunks, spelled exactly as it is, you'll find it. All right. It's it's just it's a series of videos of a woman drinking alcohol and reading goosebump stories oh, okay. and it's just funny. And Goose Drunks is a really good name. It gets a lot of credit just for having a good name. All right. It's worth checking out. Let's see. I'm gonna Kaiser So say my uh plug recommendation. Oh my god. Alan, you wanna go for, you wanna go next? I'm gonna do two just because I think I have to. I mean there's we are recording another episode. I'm next. doing two because it's related. And I already All said right. I was going to do one. 
Okay. Yeah, you know, you got to check out Lorraine Coleman's blog. Uh, I believe it's Twilight Language because it's, um, you know, not only did he break the story, but he kind of takes the whole Fortean track down of just analyzing like crazy places with similar names and events. And yeah, you know, the, the daily news is just constantly unwrapped with him. But now let's just do Nathan for you the second time. <laughs> he, he deserves a plug every, every, every episode. But no, Loren Coleman's uh, Twilight Language blog, I believe is what it's called, or it's Crypto Mundo. I don't remember. but I've heard of that one. Yeah, I know. He's, he's the greatest. He's the true researcher. Hmm. I have only kind things to say. I thought you were going to plug Phantasm, Shefton, even though you haven't seen it. No, that's. I said I had one that I knew of, which was Goose Drunk. So I'm, I'm going to plug Phantasm next time. So this is a preview of that plug. All right. Uh, I just started listening to a new podcast. It's not that new, but uh, it's 16 episodes, but they do every other week, so 32 weeks. And so, uh, <laughs> Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast. It's a D&D podcast where it's also an isekai, <laughs> where four dads go to <laughs> D&D land and try to rescue their children. Silent. I was trying to be respectful. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it. The things you told me were really funny. <laughs> I almost choked playing Monster Hunter last night while watching it or listening to it. It sounds genuinely entertaining. So Monster really Hunter, like, uh, you know, nerd requires stuff like ancillary shit because it's all grinding. No, Oof. This, this is a callback. To the last no, it's, time we recorded. I, I, I just li- have to listen to stuff it. because my mind will it's start all talking grinding. to me. <laughs> No, I'll, I have to do it no matter what. This sounds like a job, Garrett. It sounds oh like God. something you do at work. Well, I mean, it is definitely. Don't take bad. away the one thing that's making me happy, Alan. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> is it upside Hello. down? <laughs> See, we're a shop shop show Hunter now. so much. <laughs> Although I do only solo play. Yeah, it's sometimes a nightmare to play. Like, it's only good to play with friends. I mean, no, you know, I, I like playing with other people, but I have to solo play because I need to get good. Ah, <laughs> I see. And by that, I mean, I, I'm already good. <laughs> but I mean, you have to grind. No, I haven't had to fight a single monster more than once to get all the parts I needed. Yeah, it sounds like a, a grinding game because you want to yeah. fight mm. all the monsters. Mm. I haven't had to fight a monster more than once. You want to fight the monsters. Well, yeah, that's you true, don't that get to a grind. No, you have to grind to fight the monsters. No, only. you don't. I, I had a bit and I don't remember it anymore. <laughs> I already wasted it in the car. Hmm. <laughs> I don't remember. Anywho. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, what do we do next? Well, you know, I want to say, say that I've been maybe not mean enough on Luigi. No, God damn it. Oh, my goodness. But the truth is, you know, in another time... <laughs> In another life, maybe I could see him as someone I'd call friend. But not now. Burn in hell, Luigi. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Hey, I'm sorry for this, this episode. (laughs) If you want to ensure nothing like this ever happens again. Give us some money. <laughs> He's essentially holding the, holding the listener hostage. No, because I don't want to do an episode like this ever again either. I might do more off the top of my head, but no more arguing about Monster Hunter. We're only All right, I'll just stick to Monster. arguing about Luigi. That's going to be the... And his merits as a grinding human. <laughs> it is a grind to hang out with Luigi. Any really? I don't who, know. I like him. It, that was just a joke for the money okay. he gave us. Okay, all right. It was just a joke for the fun. All right. Uh, in that case, I agree. It is a grind. Uh, for a dollar, you get the ability to vote, which is nice. Exercise that right. Yep. Uh, bonus episodes. Uh, so for a dollar, you get a sticker for signing up. You get to vote. You get bonus episodes. We already have new stickers, and I like them. For five dollars, five dollars, you get the same things from level one. You get access to our Discord server and new stickers whenever we get them, which uh, the new sticker will be given out on, if you sign up before the before October. So you have a week, about a week, and diploma. That's the last one, diploma. The most important one, honestly, because education really is the uh, you know the most important. Knowledge is power, and uh, so is proving that knowledge via diploma <laughs> with a piece of paper from us. 
We have also have a red bubble store where someone bought a mug. Wow. All right. And you can send us an email at the email address is featured creature pod at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on Twitter at Fecre, F E A C R E. And we're going to put the picture of the Enfield horror that Alan has on our Instagram, which is featured underscore creature. This is, uh, that's it. Remember, all you need to do to be a cryptozoologist is to say you're a cryptozoologist. Whatever that guy sounds like. It should have been your Enfield horde. Yeah, but I don't know what he sounds like. Get around, get around. I get around, yeah. Yeah, we do, but we're a podcast <laughs> called Grand Rapidian Video Play Video Games. Called Grand Rapidians Play Video Games. <laughs> My name is Willie. I'm not your average beer snob. I've been to more than 150 breweries, but I keep hams in the fridge. <laughs> My name is Ginger, and I am in the first Guinness World Record Book video game edition on the Tetris page. I'm Simon, and I can kick their butt in most video games. We hate greedy corporations. I think everyone has potential for good. And fair warning, we drink while we record. Also, so. our promo is <laughs> <to> drinking. <laughs> Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Grand Rapidians play video games. We get around. Get around. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, I'm Shar. And I'm Kelly. And together we host Drinking and Screaming. We're a new horror discussion podcast based out of Vancouver, British Columbia, where each episode we pair a new cocktail with our movie of the week. For instance, I'm pairing this ad with just a shot of tequila. You know, because... Most ads are horrible. With Drinking and Screaming, you'll find yourself pulled into a new horror film to discuss and a new cocktail to try every week. Every episode is laced with great soundtracks, theme breakdowns, production trivia, Char's bad drinks, and so much more. What? I said clips from the movie. New episodes every week. Join in on the spoops. Drinking and Screaming, wherever podcasts are found. I give this ad a 5 out of 10. You know, we don't rate the movies. 5 out of 10.